and when she turned her back, she heard a single word carry across the winds. Gary. No way that really happened. Didn't know folks had cloning machines like that. We don't. Cloning machines can only do organs and tissue, not whole people. It's just a scary story. All right. Well, let me tell you one that people used to frighten their kids back around the time the Vault Dweller came to the Boneyard. I call this story Mother of the Death Claws. Death Claws? I've killed 30 of those. And I've killed a Death Claw with a single shot. But that's a story for another day. Suffice it to say, back in the 2160s, most people thought Death Claws were just a myth. The Vault Dweller was one of the few people north of the Angel's Boneyard that ever saw one and survived. People in California said the Death Claw was the most evil thing to rise out of the ashes following the war. A ghost from the back when times that haunted the wasteland, the size of three men, teeth as long as your arm, claws as sharp as a ripper. A demon birthed in the fires of the apocalypse. Shoot them in legs with a dart gun, then pick away at them till they go down. Laser rifle works best. That might work on one death claw, but there are neighborhoods in the boneyard where packs of them roam the streets by night. The death claw mother spawned new horrors faster than anyone could kill them, even the gun runners. Back then, the gun runners were just a small group of machinists set up in an old factory surrounded by a moat of radioactive goo, not the interstate arms merchants they are today. The Vault Dweller and their remaining companions passed through the Boneyard on their way to confront the master of the Super Mutant Army. They were the most capable fighting force in the land, but even they would need help to stop the horror that hid beneath the cathedral. And help doesn't come free. I think you're straying off topic, Storyteller. How about that Mama Deathclaw? I'm getting to that. You see, the gunrunners traded with other factions in the area, but they couldn't do real business. Not with the regulators squeezing them dry, the death claws stopping them from relocating. No matter how many they killed, they kept coming. And only the vault dweller was brave enough to enter her lair. I heard them death claws weren't the nastiest thing in the boneyard. Not by a long shot. Folk in California used to tell tales of a bounty hunter so mean he terrified outlaws all the way up to New Reno. A man they called Chris. He traveled with a posse of goons that make a fire gecko's blood run cold. They was called Cain, the first murderer. Say good night, Gracie. Exile. Maybe those scars will make good party talk. And the song. And he's not wearing a cup either. They roam the territory around the Angel's Boneyard, showing no mercy to the wicked. Get your mitts off that kid. I'm Christopher. And you're meat. Some of the old timers in my hometown say that he even beat the tar out of the vault dweller once. We don't appreciate wise guys here. Buzz off. Can't guess what the vault dweller did to get his dander up. That meat the heroes went south faster than a flock of geese in November. You're about to discover why I'm one of the most fearsome bounty hunters in the wasteland. I'm gonna make you look like a cracked pretzel. Time to increase the old body count. Ah! It's survival of the fittest, and you're out of shape. Ah, my groin is the groin of fire. Ah! Didn't need that knee anyway. <laughs> That didn't happen. 
Whoever told you that must have been out of their head on jet. The vault dweller brought peace to the boneyard, didn't run around picking fights. They helped defuse a war that was being brewed between a local gang and a bunch of crooked lawmen called the Regulators. But the most important thing that happened in the boneyard was when the vault dweller gained the trust of the followers of the apocalypse. The followers, the children, the homologists, I get all them doomsday cults confused. The followers aren't a cult. They're, uh, what's that word? I guess you could call them a charity, not a religion or cult. Just people selflessly dedicated to preserving the ways of the back when times. Unlike the Brotherhood, the followers used their knowledge to help people, freely. They were founded by Nicole, who came to the Boneyard from Dayglow, built a headquarters in a pre-war library, and gathered like-minded followers. Pretty effective organization for a bunch of anarchists. They got a spy inside the cathedral. They knew that the children of the cathedral were connected to the super mutants, told the dweller everything they knew, and even sent a few followers along to help stop the super mutant master. I've been hearing the mutants talk about that master all my life. Ain't one of them ever given me a straight answer about what the master really was. Some kind of giant mutant too big to even leave his base? The vault dweller didn't say just what the master was in their memoirs. But there were some clues in that story. I also met a few of the first generation super mutants who were there when it all happened. And there's someone still alive that I think knew the master before it went by that name. But that... If you say, that's a story for another day, I'll shoot you in the face. Careful there, storyteller. I think she means it. Besides, I've never been a big fan of cliffhangers myself. All right. Well... When the Vault Dweller arrived at the cathedral... Someone's coming. 